Discover, this is Daniela. Hi, it's Jennifer Coolidge. I just want to thank you for making me feel so special. I earned cash back on debit for my dinner party groceries. That's great. But with Discover Cashback Debit, we give everyone cash back on everyday purchases. Anything else I can help you with? Do you like asparagus and mushroom sorbet? I've got leftovers. Introducing Discover Cashback Debit, a checking account with cash back. It pays to discover. Eligibility in terms at discover.com slash cashback debit. Discover Bank, member FDIC. Hello, it is Ryan, and I was on a flight the other day playing one of my favorite social spin slot games on chumbacasino.com. I looked over the person sitting next to me, and you know what they were doing? They were also playing Chumba Casino. Coincidence? I think not. Everybody's loving having fun with it. Chumba Casino is home to hundreds of casino style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere even at 30,000 feet. So sign up now at chumbacasino.com to claim your free welcome bonus. That's chumbacasino.com and live the chumba life. No purchase necessary. VGW. Void. We're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus. Uh, Granny Zabner, I believe that's our ring. Ah. presents the new Lum and Abner show. <laughs> Tonight, Frigid Air, a division of General Motors, brings you a brand new kind of visit with those old characters down in Pine Ridge. Featuring Clarence Hartzell as Ben Withers, the music of Felix Mills, and starring your old favorite, Lum and Abner. America's number one refrigerator is Frigidaire. Yes, any way you look at it, America's number one refrigerator is Frigidaire. Number one in popularity. For more Frigidaire refrigerators serve in more American homes than any other make. Number one in thrilling new advantages, as you can see for yourself at any Frigidaire dealers. And number one in dependability. For Frigidaire refrigerators are made only by General Motors. And this association of experience with experience, of skill with skill, is your guarantee of lasting satisfaction. So when it comes to a new refrigerator for your home, remember this. The first name you think of is the right one to buy. Frigidaire, America's number one refrigerator. As we look in on the little community of Pine Ridge today, we find the old fellows in their Jotham down store. Lum is talking on the telephone. Listen. Well, this sure is a pleasant surprise, Miss Rowini. <laughs> Why, sure, Miss Rowini. Why, sure, Miss Rowini. Oh, but yes, Miss Rowini. Oh, but beans, Miss Rowini. <laughs> oh, that'll be just wonderful, Miss Rowini. Oh, Lord, me. Papa. Yes, Mom. <laughs> Goodbye. Uh, Granny Zabner, guess who that was? Grover Cleveland. <laughs> now, you, you recollect that cousin of Ezra Seastrunks that was here one time before? Sure, I know who you mean. Are you done talking to her now? Yeah, sure, why? Well, take the receiver out of your pocket and hang it up. There. <laughs> <laughs> How'd that get in there? Lom, why don't you stay away from her? The other time she's here, you got to bragging on yourself and just got yourself in trouble, and you'll do the same thing again. I will not. She just got in town, and she's dropping over here to invite me to take Thanksgiving dinner with her. Why? Did she mention it? Uh, no. Did she talk about eating? Uh, no. Did she bring up the word Thanksgiving? Well, No. Lom, if you do go over, I'd suggest you pack yourself a little lunch. (laughs) Oh, she'll invite me, don't you worry. I'll work the conversation around to where she will. Yeah, but Thanksgiving will be over by then. (laughs) Wait a minute, wait a minute. There she comes across the street now. Oh, look at that walk. Abner, you go back in the feed room or any place. You sort of warp my personality. It was pretty well bent when I first met you. (laughs) Now, hurry up, Abner, and don't sit back there and listen. (laughs) Thank now, listen here, you little snoop. I beg your pardon. Oh, excuse me, Miss Rowini. Oh, Mr. Edwards. Oh, but 
But it's delightful to see you again. But delightful. Oh, I'm delightful, too. But, too. No, it's... <laughs> it's so nice being in your quaint little village once more. Oh, it's just quaint as all get out. <laughs> Special round Thanksgiving time with folks inviting one another to dinner. <laughs> Well, now that you mention it, Mr. Edwards, I was thinking of inviting you over to the sea chances for Thanksgiving dinner, but I don't know where I could get any domestics. Oh, well, turkey's plenty good enough for me. <laughs> oh, I'm referring to servants. Well, turkey's good enough for them, too. <laughs> but I am speaking of the servant problem, Mr. Edwards. You know how one suffers from that nowadays. Oh, does one? I suffer something stupendous from it. <laughs> Because if I'd had any sense, I would have brought my chef along with me. The French make by far the best ones, don't you think? Oh, by far. I had them make one up for me the other day. <laughs> oh, do you have one? Uh, what's his name? Who? Why, your French cook. Huh? Oh, him. Why, uh, French, let's see. I, I call him Mademoiselle Alphonse. <laughs> uh, isn't that a rather odd name for him? Well, he's a foreigner, you know. Oh, oh, yes, yes. Uh, what time is this Thanksgiving dinner going to be? Well, I'm not sure. I'm not used to entertaining in so small a place as the sea strunks is. Uh, my home in London, um, Ohio, uh, <laughs> it wasn't elaborate, but it was adequate. Twenty rooms and a solarium. Uh, what size place do you have, Mr. Edwards? Oh, it ain't much. Just a little 30-room mansion. But it's home to me. Uh, do you have a solarium? No, I never cared much for swimming. <laughs> what time did you say for dinner? Oh, I don't know. I'm so handicapped here. Do you realize that I don't even have an upstairs maid? That ain't nothing. He ain't even got an upstairs. <laughs> why, why, who said that? Uh, nobody. That was just the wind. Ooh. Now, about this Thanksgiving dinner, I, I'd love to have you over to my place, but I ain't got half enough servants to run the mansion right now, and I wouldn't feel right asking you to come over there and rough it. Oh, but I'd love that, Mr. Edwards. Uh, what time will it be? Well, uh, Miss Rowena, you oh, see... Oh, do make it for seven, and thank you so much, you dear sweet boy. But dear sweet... Uh, Miss Rowena, but Miss Rowena... Oh, me. <laughs> All right, Abby, you shut up. I never said a word, you dear sweet boy. Now, <laughs> cut that out. How's everything around the mansion? <laughs> I told you not to listen, you little leaves droop. I don't... You got the only clapboard mansion I ever heard of. All right, Abner. Where'd all them servants of yours sleep? On that one horsehair sofa? <laughs> all right, so I exaggerated a little. Oh, I don't know. Man, is the time I saw that French cook of yours standing over a hot solarium. <laughs> <laughs> Biling up a mess of coon and collards. <laughs> Abner, don't you realize the jam I'm in? Here I've got to put on a Thanksgiving dinner in a mansion, which I ain't got, with some servants, which I ain't got. This calls for brains. Which you ain't got. <laughs> Thanksgiving ain't but a few days off. Yeah, I doubt if you could build a mansion by then. Not even with Alphonse helping you. Oh, I might as well forget the whole thing. Or to kept my big mouth shut. Amen, brother. <laughs> even if I did have a nice place, I don't know where I'd get any servants. Or, wait a minute. <laughs> Abner? Oh, no, 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 you don't. Now, no, listen, no, Abner. No, now, listen long. Abner. No. I ain't asking you anything yet. No, in the first place, I can't cook. In the second place, I can't talk French. In the third place, I wouldn't do it in the first place. <laughs> All right, then you can be my English butler. No, no. I'm going to be eating at home that day with my own little family. And they couldn't get along without me. Bless their hearts. Bless their little heart. Abner, you'll be all done at your place for the time I'll need you. No, 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 That takes care of my butler. Now, who can I get for... Wait a minute. There comes Ben Withers. I wonder if he can cook. Ah. Hi, Grannies. Come on in here, Ben, old boy. Just the fella I want to see. Can you talk French, Ben? Well, I'm a few want to learn to speak French. The man you want is Cicero Gundel. Who's he? Yes. Look, 
Ben, all I'm interested in is getting a French cook. I see. And you want to know how to converse with him in his native tongue. No, Ben, I don't... Fine. Th- Sister <laughs> Ogundo... <laughs> Sister Ogundo, Mount Idy resident, made an exhaustive study of the French language immediately after the First World War. He wanted to learn the meaning of the words of Mademoiselle from Armateur. <laughs> Yeah, well, Ben, I don't... At the end of five years of concentrated study, he discovered that the song was written in English. (laughs) Well, why couldn't he have told that in the first place? Cicero Gundel is an Armenian. (laughs) Ha! Now, the only trouble, as I see it, Lum, before Cicero can teach you French, you'll have to learn Armenian. Ben, I told you I don't want to learn no language. I'm just trying to arrange for a Thanksgiving dinner. Oh, well, the place you want to go, then, is Tom and Minnie's restaurant. But, Ben, the I don't... The finest short-order house in Mount Ice. Tom and Minnie's. It's run by a man named Tom and his wife. Her name is Irene. <laughs> Irene? Well, who's Minnie? Fine. <laughs> On Thanksgiving Day, you can get a chicken fried steak there cut in the shape of a turkey wing. Perhaps you've eaten there, Lum. No, I ain't. Maybe you hit it in 1937. That was the year it was closed up by the Board of Health. (laughs) Ben, all I'm trying to do is put on this dinner for Esri Seastrunk's cousin, Miss Rowini. But I need a batch of servants to do it. Now, Abner here's been assigned to the butler job. I never said I'd sign nothing. And I (laughs) thought maybe you could be my French chef, Ben. Oh, thank you very highly, Lum. But I've been invited over to the Walt Bates's for dinner that day. That is, if they don't go out of town. Wait a minute. Is there a chance the Bates is going to be gone on Thanksgiving? Ah, uh, dog as long, that would be the place for you to sneak into. It ain't exactly a 30-room mansion, but it's the biggest house in town. Oh, I wouldn't think of such a thing. Hardly. <laughs> yeah, call them up and see if they're sure enough going to leave. Eh? Yeah, all right, sure. But don't let on why you want to know for her. <laughs> Hello? Walt Bates speaking. Uh, say, Walt, uh, this is Abner Peabody. Oh, just a minute, Abner. I'm talking business with the fella here. Uh, hold the phone a second. Yeah, all right. Well, that's the deal then, eh, Mr. Viborg? Yep. And if you folks are leaving tonight, I'll bring my crew in here first thing in the morning and spray this place from top to bottom. Mm-hmm. When we get done, there won't be a living bug of no kind left in the joint. Well, good. And if any new pets get in here, they're in for an awful surprise. <laughs> <laughs> How soon can we get back in the house? Well, I wouldn't come back till a few days after Thanksgiving. But if you do have to go in the house for any reason before that, whatever you do, don't light no matches. Blow you clean out of here. Now, remember, don't light no matches, see? Don't worry, don't worry. We won't, and I'll see you when we get back. Right. So long. Uh, Hello, Abner. Uh, Yeah, uh, say, Walt, I was just wondering if you're going to need some groceries for Thanksgiving. No, no, we're going out of town. Going to debug the joint. Oh, well, you'll enjoy it there. Have a nice Thanksgiving, and don't hurry back. And they're sure enough going to be gone, huh? Yeah, uh, they're going to some place called the Bugler Joint. <laughs> <laughs> the Bilk Junction, perhaps. Well, something like that. Never heard of it. Well, looks like I'm all set, then. We'll cook the dinner right over there in Walt's kitchen. Yeah, yeah. And build up a nice fire in that big fireplace of his. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And uh, light some candles on the dinner table. Oh, wait till Miss Rowena sees all that. I grannies, we're put on the biggest one blowout she's ever been. <laughs> Don't expect no sympathy from me, Lum Edwards. If you think I'm going to help you with your Thanksgiving dinner, you got another thank of coming. Hi, Mr. Edwards. It's Peabody. Happy Thanksgiving. Well, howdy, Mr. Niles. Yes, it is a happy Thanksgiving for some people. 
Say, uh, didn't I hear something about your needing help with your Thanksgiving dinner, Mr. Edwards? Well, uh, I'm your man. I'm your man. You are? Well, bless you, Mr. Niles, and bless Frigid Air for sending you here. Now, what about the turkey? Is that quite a problem? No problem at all. For anybody with a roomy new Frigid Air refrigerator, just prepare your turkey a day or two ahead of Thanksgiving and keep it in your Frigid Air. There's still plenty of room for other holiday fixings. A uh, salad, uh, hot biscuits, maybe. Well, salad the same way. Prepare it before you get busy with last-minute cooking. Keep it fresh and crisp in your Frigidaire refrigerator. And really smart cooks, mix dough for hot breads or pastries ahead of time. Even roll it out and cut it. Then keep it safe in their Frigidaire refrigerators or Frigidaire home freezers. Hmm. And when I say safe, I really mean safe. For the Frigidaire is the only refrigerator with a meter miser. The simplest and most reliable cold making mechanism ever built. And can you bake a pumpkin pie, Billy Boy, Billy Boy? <laughs> Why, a Frigid Air Electric Range makes any holiday cooking a breeze. One model even has two ovens, so you can bake a pie in one while the turkey is roasting in the other. For lots of oven cooking, you don't even have to stay in the kitchen. The Cookmaster Oven Control turns the oven on and off all by itself. Oh, sure. Thanksgiving dinner's a cinch for anybody with a frigid air refrigerator and frigid air electric range. Well, I'm sure glad you reminded me, Mr. Niles. Uh, by the way, uh, what size head have you got? What, what size head? Why, uh, I wear a seven and eight hat, if that's what you mean, but uh, what well, for? your chef's cap. Because if I can't find a real cook like you said, you are my man. Islam, the Bates has got a nice house here, but don't it seem to you like it smells kind of peculiar in here? Mm, yeah, it does, but I think when we start the fire in the fireplace, that'll clear everything out of here. You want me to light it now? Mm, no, wait till Miss Rowena gets here. <laughs> yeah, she'll get a big bang out of that. Uh, Adam, you better get into your buttle suit. Lom, I ain't gonna wear that thing. Them britches is for a boy. They just come to my knees. Well, that's where they're supposed to come. And them socks are women's stockings. White cotton lyle, just like Elizabeth wears when she dresses up. Now, Abner, stop fussing. Ben Withers is having to wear a worse get-up than you, and you don't hear him hollering. Why? What have you done with him? I ain't done nothing. Wait, wait a minute, there he comes now. He's got it on. Is that Ben? Oh, for the land sake. <laughs> I, I don't laugh at him, man. <laughs> Mom, I refuse to wear this costume. <laughs> I am severing relations with you as of now, and that's retroactive from here on. <laughs> ben, it's too late to back out now. Let's see. I uh, better check on the vittles. Hey, Alphonse. Oh, Alphonse. Yeah, let's see what he's got on. Come in here, Alphonse. Oh, Mom. Hey, wait a minute, Lum. Is Cedric Alphonse? I thought the frigid air fella was going to be. No, he was, but I found out he couldn't talk French. <laughs> and Cedric can, I suppose. Uh, Cedric, let's hear you say something in French. Oh. <laughs> what does that mean in English? <laughs> Seems to lose something in the translation. <laughs> Alphonse, how are you coming with your chef work? Oh, fine. I've learned two French words already. Oi, oi. Yeah, but have you got the dinner cooked? Oh, was I supposed to do that, too? Uh -huh. Oh, for pity's sakes. Well, it's too late to cook it now. Yeah, you better just run down to Luke Spears' restaurant and buy everything ready-made. And hurry up, Alphonse, because Miss Rowena will be here before long. And Abner, get into your buttle duds. I ain't going to do it now, Lon. I just plain flat ain't going to do it, and that is final. Lom, there are the seams in my stocking straight. Yeah, they look fine, uh... Might pull them up a little more. <laughs> Swan, your legs look like two ropes with knot tied in them. Well, couldn't I just wear a pair of overhauls, be sort of a country butler? No, you're an English butler. Your name's Hawkins. Abner Hawkins? 
<laughs> no, just hulking. Ah. And recollect that I'm a royalty. I'm a, a duke or a prince or maybe even a earl. I don't know. Now, where did you get that idea? <laughs> well, don't forget my name's Edwards. I go back to the King Edwards of England. <laughs> I think. I wish you'd go back there right now. <laughs> So now be sure and call me the Earl and call Miss Rowena something high class like her ladyship or something uh -oh. that'll show her that I'm used to hobnobbing around with the castle crowd. Uh oh. Hawkins? Yes, your Earlship. I do believe our guest has a roving. I'll get up and let her in. That's your job. I'll flip you to see who does it. Now listen. I'm a man of few words. When I crook my finger at you, that means come here. Well, I'm a man of few words, too, and when I shake my head, that means I ain't coming. <laughs> Abner, for goodness sake, get that door. Oh, all right, I'm getting that. Oh, good evening, your high-class ladyship. <laughs> Won't you, uh, pip-pip into the parlor, old beans? I, I, I beg your pardon? Tally-ho and Piccadilly. <laughs> Uh, Hawkins, just show the lady in and let it go at that, please. Now, yeah, follow me, Duchess. <laughs> hey, Earl, look who's here. Ah, oh, Miss Rowini. Ah, oh, Mr. Edwards. Ah, oh, prattle, prattle. <laughs> oh, but you do have a lovely place here, but lovely. <laughs> oh, it's all right to knock around in. <laughs> Keeps me off the street. <laughs> um, Hawkins. I wonder if you'd mind doing something with my purse. Hello, I don't know what to do with them. <laughs> Little sheep dip wouldn't hurt them. <laughs> Hawkins, just take the lady's fur mackinaw and hang it up in the vestibule. <laughs> Yeah, I reckon that's the best thing to do, get it out of sight. <laughs> I told Bean, tally ho and blimey. <laughs> you know, Mr. Edwards, your man has a rather peculiar accent. Yes, it is peculiar. <laughs> what part of England is he from? Oh, you know, here and there. <laughs> uh, is he an Essex man? No, the only thing he's ever driven is a Saxon. <laughs> What a lovely old fireplace you have. Uh, might we have a fire in it? Oh, but indeedy. A little fire always livens up a holiday, don't you think? Oh, indubious. Uh, Hawkins. Uh, did you buzz your earlship? Yes. Hawkins, will you please touch a match to the logs? It would be a pleasure indeed, sir. Thank you, Hawkins. Not at all. Your earlship. Uh... Got a match on you, Duchess? <laughs> I beg your pardon, I... Hawkins, find some matches yourself and hurry up. Um, uh, while uh, you're preparing the fire, I, I think I'll powder my nose. <laughs> uh, do you have an upstairs maid? Oh, but natural. Uh, oh, oh, Bernice. Wayne. <laughs> 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 Hawkins, will you please desist from that gruff oh. And Bernice, will you fetch Miss Rowena a powder puff? Quite. Uh, never mind. I, I'll use my own. Oh, uh, is it all right if I smoke? Yeah, sure. Go right ahead. Um, uh, do you happen to have a cigarette lighter? Uh, yeah. Hawkins, have you found them matches yet? Uh, oh, yeah. I forgot about that. Well, here I think I have a match. That's fine, Bernice. I'm sure I must have one in my pants pocket. <laughs> Bernie. What? Oh, my stars, what's the matter with me? <laughs> Bernice, you better run out in the kitchen and help Alphonse dish up the vittles. I told him to garnish the plates with a stalk of celery. Now, see that he does it. Why? Hey, I found the matches. You want to fire up, Duchess? Why, yes, thank you. Stand over here. Hey, dinner is served. Why, why, come and get it. <laughs> Uh, never mind, Hawkins. I'll have the cigarette later. Yeah, all right. Sure, sure. Let's get in there. The grub's on. Miss Rowini, would you care to walk into the dining room on my arm? Oh. <laughs> I don't believe she can do it. <laughs> I 
I do hope you've worked up a good appetite, Miss Rowini, because Alphonse has knocked himself out cooking up a batch of high-class French vittles. I hope he has some canapes. Yeah, I've got a can of peas and a can of... <laughs> And a harmony grit, Terry. Hawkins, shut up. Ah. Oh. Miss Rowena, you sit over there and I'll sit here. Um, uh, thank you. Hey, hey, wait a minute here. You ain't set a place for me and Bernice. Of course not. You're the servants, you idiot. Well, I'll be a polka dotted possum. Hi, <laughs> dog, as if that ain't gratitude for you. Hawkins, just mind your own business. <laughs> I'm yeah. sorry, Miss Rowena. This servant problem of mine is getting worse all the time. Yes, I can see that. <laughs> well, let's dive in, Miss Rowena. <laughs> oh, Hawkins, come back here and light the candles. It's getting dark in here. Yeah, all right, all right. Don't know where I've got strength enough to strike a match, though, as hungry as I am. Mr. Edwards, I, I hate to bring this up, but my food seems to be all stuck to the plate. Mm, that's cute. So is mine. That's them French cooks for you. Oh, Alphonse. And uh, if you'll pardon my saying so, it all smells um, like shellac. Uh, did you call me, Monsieur? No, because I can't get these matches to strike. Yeah, I called you, Alphonse. Our vittles are stuck to the plate. And where's the celery stalks I told you to garnish the plates with? Garnish? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I thought you said Barney. <laughs> well, this is dreadful, but positively dreadful. Now, now, Miss Rowini, don't leave. Oh, there must be one match in here to light. Miss Rowini, please don't leave. I can explain this whole mess, and I may as well tell you the truth. Yes? You're going to hate me, but this ain't my house, and these ain't my servants. I ain't nothing at all, and I know you'll never speak to me again as long as you live, and I don't blame you. Why, you dear sweet boy... Going to all that trouble just for little old me. Oh, I think you're wonderful, but wonderful. Huh? Dad, blame these matches. And to prove it, I am going to give you a great big kiss. Oh, no, now, please. Yes, yes, I'm Ms. going Rowini, to. Miss Rowini, don't. Yes. I don't, because here's one at light. Oh, Miss Rowini. Miss Rowini. My granny's Miss Rowing. Do that again. <laughs> Mom and Abner will be back in just a moment, but first, here is an important question. When you're preparing Thanksgiving dinner, or any dinner, wouldn't you like to avoid last-minute rush by fixing some things ahead of time? It's extra easy with a Frigidaire home freezer. Stuff a turkey days ahead and keep it frozen. Store several pies, baked or unbaked. Freeze a supply of dough for hot bread. Everything's safe in a Frigidaire home freezer. It's powered by the meter miser. <laughs> How you feeling by now, hot lips? <laughs> yeah, a little better, but Granny's Abner, when Walt Bates gets back and sees his house, he's going to hit the ceiling. Hit the ceiling? He'll have to find it first. <laughs> the new Lemon Abner show is brought to you each week by Frigidaire Division of General Motors. Manufacturers of a complete line of home appliances, air conditioners, and refrigeration equipment for American business. The script is written by Roz Rogers and Betty Boyle, with music by Felix Mills. So until next Sunday night, same time, same station, this is Wendell Niles saying good night for Frigidaire, America's number one refrigerator. And now stay tuned for Cabin B-13, which follows immediately for the most of these same stations. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.
It is Ryan here, and I have a question for you. What do you do when you win? Like, are you a fist pumper? A woohooer, a hand clapper, a high fiver. I kind of like the high five, but if you want to hone in on those winning moves, check out Chumba Casino at chumbacasino.com. Choose from hundreds of social casino style games for your chance to redeem serious cash prizes. There are new game releases weekly, plus free daily bonuses. So don't wait. Start having the most fun ever at chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. VGW Group. Void were prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. Eighteen plus.